Water is one of those things we don't think about in Singapore. We drink it, we cook with it, we shower in it. We use clean water every day. But what do we know about the unseen underground pipe network that moves our water from the water sources to the taps in our homes? Hi, I'm Anwar here. I help to lay pipes which supply water to homes in Singapore. Wait, where are we? Here, we are going down our tunnel, which is about 40 metres below ground. Singapore is increasingly getting congested, not only above ground, but also below ground. So you find that many of our public roads, they have all kinds of services, telecom, gas, sewer, big water pipes, small water pipe. Last time, we could lay our pipes about 1.2 to 1.5 meter deep. But increasingly now, we are finding it challenging and our pipes are laid about as deep as 10, 15, 20 meters. I think the most memorable will be the uh, six meter tunnel from Singapore to Jurong Island. Just imagine the MRT tunnel, the train moves in, it's that same diameter. The tunnel is laid below the seabed, it's about 20 meters. And we have no choice because we've got to avoid all this infrastructure was one of my most memorable projects, if I look back. <laughs> During the early 1980s, there were many new housing board flats, Bukit Batok, Jurong West, New Town, because Singapore was undergoing development. New sites are relatively straightforward because it's nothing there. So it was a blank piece of paper. Times were different. There was no email at the time. But whenever you want to call somebody, we go take a lot of coins in the pocket and look for the nearest HDB phone. Then you have to do your drawing and go to the office and give it to them by hand. <laughs> so now you've got photocopier with scanner, some laser printer. So these are all the advances that have occurred last 30 years, you see. So it's, it's, it's quite efficient now, much more easier now. So Anwar, once the pipes are built and the water gets supplied to our homes, is the work done? Of course not. We still have to maintain the pipes. Me, Ongwan. He is part of the team that walks around 30 kilometers a day in order to check on our large network of pipes. And we also heard that he uses his super hearing ability to figure out where leaks are. During my 44 years, I had to maintain the QB pipeline in Singapore. Uh, what's that? Sounding sticks. I will bring these uh, sounding sticks wherever I go to do the detection. Cool. What does it sound like when water is leaking? The sound will be like a very high pitch sound, like hissing sound. If at least underground, maybe one to two meter down, with my naked ear, I can hear. You mean if you walk on the street? Yes, <laughs> experience counts. We also try other technologies like thermal la, the satellite la. Permanent sensors are those put in a strategic place like hospital because they have 24-7 operation and they need a lot of water. They can't afford to have uh, leaks and at least uh, straight away we can monitor. The last time was very difficult because we don't have the advanced instrument. We have to only use only geophone. With all the new technology coming, our work will be more efficient and less manpower to do the job. We help Singaporeans to get 24-7 water supply to the house. So uh, they always give us a good uh, attrition letter. They are very, very happy. Singapore has, has actually got a lot of greenery. As you know, people see it's quite beautiful. But below, underground, people don't see it. Lah. I feel myself, yes, a part of a jigsaw puzzle. Lah. A small little part. But I have actually supported the rest of the jigsaw puzzle to make it work. Lah. It makes me very proud lah, that, yes, I've contributed to the country. So the next time you take that sip of water, think again about the work it takes to move our water through all 6,300 kilometres of our pipe network before it ends up at your tap.